So let's, let's link it to the workplace because obviously that's mm -hmm. where you're applying some of this, this skill and that knowledge that you have. Mm -hmm. What is the role of, of memory science in the workplace? And if you're able to bring it to life for a couple of examples, that would be great. I mean, the, 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 for me, the most important piece is, again, getting high quality information. So just like a police investigation, if you have an HR investigation, you want as high quality information as possible. Yeah. And you want the evidence that you're using, whatever it is, to be high quality. And now high quality from a memory standpoint, because often in workplaces or in police settings, you have you rely heavily on people's memories. So like a significant part of your evidence, perhaps all of it, is individuals' memories. And so the question is, how do you know if these memories are any good? And then what do you do with them and how do you preserve them? And so how do you know if they're any good? The first question is basically, ideally they're contemporaneous. So ideally the event happened relatively recently. Mm -hmm. Ideally they haven't spoken with too many other people, especially other people who were there, because that can contaminate. Ideally, you know, there's, there's all these ideals. Um, but what that means is ideally you're recording on your own immediately after something happens, what happened? Yeah. On your own. <laughs> Not to a human, ideally. And so this is why we created Spot, is because you can do it immediately on your own. You can log into the chatbot, you can record it, and you can make a timestamp PDF, which shows exactly when you remember this information. And it asks you non-leading neutral questions. So that's the other piece of it, is the questions. And so in an HR setting, I'm, I continue to be surprised that most people who are HR leaders even, don't actually uh, ever receive training on they, they receive training on processes, but they don't receive training on memory. And I think it's really difficult to consistently ask appropriate questions without understanding how memory works. So just like I would never train the police and just say, here, do this, here's a list of things. That's really difficult because people are gonna go off script, they're gonna get it wrong. Because they don't know what it is that they're getting wrong until you teach them some of the core concepts of the, you know, the flexibility and that, that sort of recombining of information. And so, yeah, so I guess in, in terms of the workplace, I wish that people were trained on memory. I wish that we um, focus on this, not in a, I think sometimes it's seen as like truth detecting, which is wrong, the, the wrong premise. Like you're, you shouldn't ever be going into a situation going, is this person lying? Yeah. That's not a useful starting point for anything, basically. Assume that people aren't out to hurt each other. Assume that people are there because, I mean, if someone's even, Frankly, even if they are, if, if something is distorted, if someone has gone out of their way to go to HR, something is wrong, right? Like yeah. You don't just randomly show up at HR and say, I need to tell you something. Um, they're unhappy and there's, they need some help. And so, but for me, I think it's the, again, training people on, on memory or at least having them understand or using something like Spot in the first instance to gather information can really help. So in terms of examples, um, I mean, one of the, the key things that, uh, even in, in criminal investigations. So people who are trained on what's called the cognitive interview, mm -hmm. which is best practices in memory interviewing, which is also the foundation for SPOT. Um, when people who are trained, so police officers in the UK who are trained in the cognitive interview, uh, are told to not interrupt people. Now you've been very good actually. <laughs> but most people, even when given this instruction, especially during what's called the free recall phase, so the tell me everything you can remember, which is always the first question you should ask. Um, open. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell me everything you can remember. People interrupt on average someone every seven seconds. <laughs> seven seconds. And we know that interruptions are a huge barrier to disclosing information. Um, and so in HR settings, uh, we know that this is also likely to happen. And in research that we've done where we compared our bots to real people who are being trained in, in, a, in a master's course to be HR professionals. They got way fewer details. They got way lower quality because they weren't necessarily asking things in the right order, um, and they weren't uh, and, and they were interrupting people too much. And that stops people from telling their story, and that stops you from getting the details. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe via your podcast app of choice, and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.